Alright, so we have some new phasing and a right turn overlap. Uh, I wasn't uh, I wasn't expecting the particular phasing, but I suppose there's these dash lines on the road that they direct traffic into the correct lanes. To me, it seems kind of like this is more of a conflict. So right now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna press the pedestrian button, and we'll kind of see what happens. So it's a fully protected pedestrian phase. So we have two horizontal signals overhead with uh, protected left, protected right, and if the pedestrian button is pushed, it's a fully protected right turn movement. This technically is a concurrent crossing, so they could actually have left that as a pet overlap, but they didn't. Okay, so we got right turn, and uh, they changed it to flashing left. So flashing left will gap out after everyone goes. Didn't use arrows or ball signals for some reason, but the right turn is still green. And it actually goes with this, which is. I guess if cars stay in their lane, it's not technically a conflict. So we'll go and press the button for the next crossing. Buttons on the other side. I probably, well, I guess that brings uh, to the years of buttons on this thing. Uh, at least it doesn't go on for the whole walk cycle. You can recycle it. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, this intersection seen quite a few years of different iterations. There used to be left and right arrows here. Now it's uh, this intersection's needed um, some infrastructure upgrades for a while, but I wasn't expecting. I, what I expected them to do is actually run it in split phase to run this side first, then run the other side, and then they could have held that right turn overlap when they get the advanced green here, but not to actually have the right turn and a left turn here at the same time. And I mean. Like yes, it's technically not a conflict, like if they're still in the correct lanes, but I just I just see it being like a disaster waiting to happen. Especially in Halifax. But we'll take a cross here and they did put no right on red, so we'll see how uh, well the compliance is. So not at all. No one's listening, of course. So. I guess they could have done a head overlap here too. And they should have done also a delayed walk. It's still an instant walk, and there's still a lot of people just running this. Like, look at this person, like, come on. <laughs> so just single press. So they put new signal change, but they didn't put like new signs for no red on red. But 
people it takes people a long time to figure this out. Clearly changed. It's obviously different. Now we'll get a fully protected left and right. I do like how they put the flashing left in though. This is the kind of signal that they should have put over by uh, Joe Howe. Yeah. Well, it's interesting though. So that will gap out. And we got a advanced screen. Pretty long right turn overlap. See, it's actually giving them the correct amount of time to to cross here, which is or to go through the lane here. So I mean, the no right on red kind of makes sense, but they should have given them like a little bit of a delay here. As far as they didn't make this protected only. Oh, oh my God. Wrong arrow directions on the signs. Come on, guys. Oh, no, I don't want wide angle. There we go. I'll we'll have to do one more cycle here. People will get used to this though, I'm sure. That makes more sense. It will definitely hopefully save lives. It's changing now.
Sometimes it goes to instant green, and other times it doesn't, which is odd. Let's split these. Yeah, overall, interesting phasing. Still got the old CGEs here, so. Let's see if they modify anything in the future here, but. Anyway, that's uh, that is about it. There you go.